Hi, everyone, and thank you so much. Um, I'm standing here outside the Occupy the Stage warehouse with two members, and um, I'd love to, I think everyone wants to hear a lot about this place. I think that's good. Why don't you introduce yourself again for the people who came in late and then interview, um, introduce the fellows that are sitting here waiting to share okay. the evening with us. Hi, my name is Tara. Um, my Twitter handle is small underscore fair and I'm with Occupy the Stage and I'm a live streamer so a lot of people might know me from that. I live in New Orleans and I've been here for since 99 and uh, this is Justin and this is Robert from who from Occupy the Stage and we're here at the Occupy the Stage warehouse in New Orleans Louisiana um, hey Justin hey Robert thank you for giving us your evening uh, we're really excited about this I've been immersed in OTS NOLA um, all week so it's gonna be fun to see it in real time and um, Tara I'm gonna turn my video off because I have a lot of other stuff that's gonna run on the screen so uh, everybody knows what I look like and so we don't need to look at me I'll come back on later so there we go that'll help with bandwidth too so why don't you go ahead and uh, launch right into it we just saw what the uh, warehouse was like in the first six months so we're excited to see what's going on there now. Okay. Well, um, Occupy the Stage uh, started out as just kind of like a uh, uh, an autonomous working group of uh, Occupy NOLA. Um, uh, well, it, it started, uh, I guess I'll, I'll start with when I joined. Um, I came in probably about a little less than two weeks after Occupy NOLA got started, and uh, it, had, it had gone off. It had gone off the flourish. And I'd come over there, and uh, well, anyway, uh, at that point it had started to fizzle a little bit. So I was a little concerned about whether or not I should even keep coming around. But uh, I remember there was this one one girl. She pulled me over and started talking to me about it, and da da da, and. Um, at the so yeah, we stuck around. I was made, making some signs, and and uh, so anyway. Um, you know we got a stage. Yeah. So, now we, so anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, I I started building things around there. Just brought my skills to it, and somebody whispered in my ear, "Hey, we should build a stage." I was like, uh, "You know, it's New Orleans. It seems like a no-brainer." So. You know, Right, in the encampment, which was in Duncan Plaza, directly across from City Hall in New Orleans, for right. people who might not know. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so anyway, uh, so we built the stage, and about a week, week and a half, we know we're looking, you know, looking for musicians and trying to uh, get a show lined up. And we had like November fifth, we had a bank protest that day, and I had just come back from that. And uh, there was a message waiting for me at the uh, encampment um, that this burlesque troupe, Reverend Spooky was strange, and her billion dollar baby dolls had one had a uh, uh, act all lined up for that particular occasion, November fifth, and wanted to come out and perform for us after they did a, a paid gig. So, you know, absolutely, we were totally down for it. So we went out. Uh, uh, me and a couple of guys went out. We uh, Put together a movie screen and got you know uh, uh, got a projector out there and we had even a screening of V for Vendetta prior to the burlesque show. So okay, anyway, I guess I'm kind of just rambling. Why? But we, well, just in case, um, so um, the, uh, November fifth yeah, being okay. Guy Fox. So it, it was a great show, and no. it happened on a Saturday. It was, that was November fifth. It was a Saturday, and the very next business day, the city decided they're going to come in and shoo everybody. You know. Uh, said you guys gotta take the stage away or we're gonna we're gonna take it away and you got one hour so I get the call at work I boogie on down there and uh, uh, and it, I get there just in time to see the deputy mayor talking with one of the people at the encampment and I come you know a small group of people and then I, I went over the hill and I saw like the stage was just festooned with people there were people there physically holding down the stage so the police wouldn't take it away. 
And um, so that was actually when, that was the moment when Occupy, the, the, the phrase Occupy the Stage was born. So that was, that was when it was officially kind of became a working group. So um, we went through, uh, basically our, our main goal for most of the duration of staying in Camden was just putting on weekly shows. You know, that, that was our focus. And, um, and we, you know, yeah, we, we, we kept going along, kept going along with it. And after a while, it became evident, of course, we're going to wind up getting a push from the city. It was happening, you know, they're popping off nationwide, you know, the cops coming in and kicking everybody out of the encampment. So we had to decide on the next move. So it was uh, at that point that we started pulling resources, getting investors to... Uh, 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 put their money in, you know, basically it was, the idea was that everybody, you know, put in a little bit, get a large warehouse where we could uh, um, pool our resources, basically. Uh, um, the main resource being just sweat equity, right. as well as, you know, uh, any other projects and, and build the basic infrastructure for a proper activist movement. So um, that's kind of where we went. So, yeah. Uh, and did you... We got did you find that was, you know, was it fairly easy to do and reasonable to do in New Orleans? Um, like, did you guys have it more accessibility, say, to the warehouse or to options than maybe other places? Or was it still a struggle? Um, well, we didn't have a lot of the financing that the other occupations had. Uh, our, 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 the original, uh, website and, uh, and collect and donations, uh, lot was hijacked early on. Yeah. And yeah. that was, yeah, that left us, that left us playing catch up for a long time digitally. Uh-huh. Uh, so. Momentarily, there was never anything. too. So. We were, we never had, we pretty much did everything by dumpster diving and more dumpster diving. You know, random donations that came into the park. We uh, helped together what we could. Yeah. I think we did a good job. So you did it all on a shoestring with a lot of hard labor and love. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Made a little blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we, uh, so we, we got, we got the down, we, uh, we got the money enough to, uh, do the, you know, deposit, the, you know, first month's rent on a, on a rather large warehouse. We're happy. There was a lot of work that needed to go into it. This place yeah. was just full of junk. Just, I mean, it's like the entire front end was actually uh, filled up with tires. Yeah, they saw the video already. Yeah, and you saw that. That was actually wasn't even all of the tires. A lot had been moved out. We'd actually made a lot of space at that point. When yeah. We first moved in. It was a literal maze of tires in front. Yeah, like, the back was just a maze of miscellaneous. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> There were a probably maybe three foot, four foot wide path all the way to the back of the warehouse, and that was about as much space as you could get without having to start crawling over things. Oh man! <laughs> we didn't have we didn't have power, we didn't have water, we didn't even have sewer. We had to uh, cut jackhammer through forty feet of reinforced, reinforced concrete across the driveway of the warehouse next to us just to get a uh, sewer line in. So, uh, um, yeah, it was it was it was a good bit of work just getting it to where it was functionable at all. Yeah. And so I had a chance to talk with you guys earlier and and with several of the others, and um, I think it might be helpful if you just kind of describe, like that's a job not everybody would take on renovating an old warehouse. So you brought skill sets, all of you brought individual skill sets to the project. But had you had any experience as a, as a builder or a renovator before either one of you? Uh, I was I was born into the job. My father was a single parent and a contractor. So I was raised on the job and it's my career now. I restore houses by trade. So, um, yeah. So yeah, a high degree of construction. Right. So um, skills yeah. and tools. You had those. So so good. Yeah. I said one of the skills. Yeah. I and, was uh, uh, not necessarily born into the trade. Um, just really handy with my hands. Picked up a 
little bits and pieces of things here and there over the years. So. Quick learner. Well, okay, just a lot of uh, a lot of heart, I guess. Cheesy about it. Yeah, no, right. yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, he really has. Uh, uh, I definitely learned a lot since I moved in here. Well, yeah, well, you know, necessity is a mother, so <laughs> when you have the building, it's like just get into it and do it, right? Yeah, and one of the beauties of having all these individual, all these different workshops and all the projects blend. I mean, like with each with each one of our projects, it's usually an amalgamation of the different workshops, you know. Uh, and uh, um, so it, it's not, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, we've all grown a lot more uh, different skills since we've all been here working with one another. And, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> It's right, and I think the skill sets of individual people all work really nicely together here, um, definitely. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they all blend very well. So it's like all of, um, all the needs are met, basically. So. Well, it's a, well, it's a compliment to the group, and I, I, I was just, you know, when we were watching during the pre-show, I was like, wow, you guys have done an awesome amount of work this week that I know of. So it's it's really fun to see it evolving. So, um, Tara, why don't you go ahead and, and be our hostess with the mostess and start taking us on the walk and talk. You got it. All right. We're going to go inside. So, uh, yeah. And if any anyone here who may have been um, passed through with the Occupy Caravan, um, they'll probably notice how different this space looks. So, we walk in and you can kind of get a sense of the physical space with some, there we have some bicycles. Yep. And yeah. Actually, if you look here, you can see the Katrina line. Wow. Yeah, you really can. Okay. We have, so we're going to highlight the tent monsters and some other things, we but right. we're going to. This is our Mardi Gras float. We were uh, the guys of Fox and the crew of Lucy today. And Yep. That's our float. You know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of nice signs we uh, had for yeah. Okay. yeah. And then a little, uh, 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 little shrine to the, to the uh, incarcerated Anons out there. Um, a lot of solidarity to them. So. Yeah. So these are some of our larger items that have been built here. I'm going to take you over to the info shop in a minute, which is the first workshop we're going to look at. But the tent monsters. Um, we were just in a Mardi Gras parade on Saturday with this float, and um, here's another tent monster. We'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk more about the puppet theater later. But first, we're going to do the info booth, and then. Okay. The info. Okay. So. So a couple of people are already asking questions, and one of them was, um, how many people belong to the core group of OTS? Uh, yeah, between eight and ten, about yeah, about eight or ten. We have some people who travel and come back. You know, we have some really some people who travel and come back a lot. Um, so I would, yeah, I would say I'd say about ten. Okay, yeah. ten. So ten people. So um, we're at the info shop right now. So you'll have to narrate so I can keep up. Okay. So um, this is Nick. And um, I'm, he's going to sh give us a little tour of the info shop, which is just beautiful right now. Um, if you, so when you come in, uh, well, here you go. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of, the, one of the biggest reasons we do everything and make as much noise as we can is to spread the info and spread the word. You know, so you got to have the, gotta have the flyers, got to have the magazines we've got. We've got like a, a binder full of all the past actions we've ever done flyers for you know, everything we've been involved in. We've got all kinds of free you know, propaganda and stuff to hand out. We've got the library back here as well. It's all about you know, spreading knowledge, spreading the word. So, yeah. And, and, and I just, uh, you know, I guess we're you know, trying to talk about ourselves slightly as well. But yeah, you know, I landed here on Halloween and they were still trying to get everything organized. This is kind of what I ended up taking under my wing. I, two days after I moved here, I got married to 
my darling Riley, who you'll meet in a minute. You know, I think y'all have a video of that. It's pretty funny. But, uh, yeah. Okay, Talk so this you. is Nick. Yeah, <laughs> and um, so here's the info shop, and it, it's really nice. We have some zines um, up here. Occupy the Stage does have its own zine, um, Who's Zine, that hopefully we'll have another one soon. We have... Um, Definitely some great resources that people are welcome here to come and peruse, use like a great New Orleans community resource guide. We have um, a lot of different Occupy related or activist related materials, um, wonderful propaganda that people have given us, um, stuff that we like to give out a lot, propaganda. Um, the Walmart elves are in here. And then there's even there's a nice table where people can kind of go over the information. And then we have this beautiful library. Oh, I love it. I oh. love it. So I, I have a question for Nick uh, while he's sitting there. Um, had you had you had experience like in bookstores or zines or printing or anything like that before? Or this is just something you enjoy to do, so you took it on. Uh, I'm a, I'm just like a huge huge bookworm. I've done like a little bit of zine organizing and stuff before. I used to have a little bit of a collection, but I'm just I just constantly 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 reading. Sorry, going through the library and uh, you know, that's it's it's that's wonderful. And I want to make the point to the people who are watching, like this is the uh, one of the good examples about um, blending different media. So we're doing this presentation digitally, and there's all kinds of stuff going on in the workshop. But here we have old school print paper media right when people walk in the door it's accessible it's familiar and and it's engaging so um, I love it I love it good job Nick fantastic okay thank you so much and uh, I love what Nick's done with the info booth it's really with the info shop it's really wonderful can you step back um, and pan around what? on that just so, one more time so we can get yeah yeah look at that I mean that's awesome you walk in the door and it's like a library I love it and it's really nice and um, there I mean that, that that also the digital media center there are you know there aren't computers there isn't a television over here so it really is a nice place to sit and read because I mean it's, it's so distracting these days if, if you know to if there's a, if there's a laptop sitting there to get distracted and, and go on there so it's, it's a nice little area to to read and to make the or look through zines yeah, people love it um, when they come over. They go through the the information, and that's it's wonderful. Um, the next station, yeah. So over here next to our float, we have our beautiful sign making station, and I'm going to introduce you to Briley. Hi, Briley. Hi. Welcome to OPN. Thank you for taking the evening and being on with us. No problem. I'm happy that uh, we got invited to, you know, share what we're doing here with everybody on the outside. Um, my my involvement is basically wherever I'm needed. I, I'm first and foremost an artist, but I have a love for this cause and this this place and the like continuous evolution um, of being able to ex express yourself in a visual manner. And I mean anything from as outrageous or eye-catching, anything to keep um, education afloat of what's really happening around you, that's basically uh, what I try to strive for and accomplish in this space. And, um, you know, teach people that, uh, and, well, and let people know that it, it's okay to speak out and express yourself in any way that you want to. And um, I want Tara to pan up on the sign there and um, get a good look at that. And I want you to explain this word and the meaning behind it to all the viewers. All right. Um, to, well, okay. Um, Tutelorium is Latin. And it's basically the, the main purpose of this is so it's, used in the English language. And people can, it, it's not the, the word itself, well it is the word itself, um, that, Francis help me out here. Um, it comes <laughs> from Titulus, which is yes. a second sequential masculine noun, 
meaning sign, graffiti, or slogan, and you know, the, you know, with the, the little thing at the end, the um is like as like words like emporium, atrium. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Yeah, like that, that, yeah it's, it's the sign. domain of the signs and things related to signs. Yeah, and now you have to introduce yourself since you're on the camera. Uh, I'm Francis. Hi, Francis. Thank you for being here tonight. So, so Briley, it, did you come out of uh, out of an arena where you were a sign maker before, or a printer, or did you? Is that just a passion of yours, and then you're using it for good instead of evil? Right. Well, uh, it well <laughs> depends on who's looking at it. <laughs> but, um, I, <laughs> I've always had a love for art, like since I was little. But I um, I pursued a career in graphic design. I got my degree and uh, tried to go into like corporate branding and the understanding of like business and advertising. And that to me was the evil thing. So I branched off and found this whole other world. Um, that fit with what I was trying to accomplish. So I was still free to express myself, but also advertise for something that I believe to be brilliant and wonderful and positive instead of, you know, going out and making uh, advertisements for, like, Ford or um, Wendy's, you know, or something like that. I'd rather be doing this real-world shit <laughs> for real world people. That's uh, what I'm trying to do. So, yeah. It's excellent. I love it. And, you know, I, I spent a lot of time with the image pool, and all the work is so graphically powerful, and the messaging is dead on. So it's it's wonderful to see. And, and again, to make the observation that, um, you know, you're using yet another layer of media to communicate, and it's accessible, and... Um, People like it. It's fun. It pops and it imprints. So, so excellent. I'm, I'm so envious of you guys. It's really good. And when it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you guys have like community sign making nights or something like that? Like, do or do you do? Does the collective do most of the work themselves? It depends a lot on if the collective is having some sort of a protest or creative action, we usually make them here. But when we're working with other groups to have an action together, like for May Day, for example, we had sign making over here. So we definitely, if we're doing things, because we, do, we definitely go to actions and support other groups, um, go in solidarity with them. So we will invite people over to make signs if, you know, we're all doing it for the same thing, definitely. Um, so it, it kind of, it kind of depends, the action and who's involved kind of dictates that, you know, if some, if that answers your question. I'm just kind of looking at yeah, some of the signs. Yeah, it does. It's, the, that's great. It's great video. Um, so did this stuff, this has all started in the last six months, or was it happening just kind of offhand while you guys were in the encampment and afterwards, and you just now have a central place for it? I mean, for all the activities, not only the sign making. The encampment got the push um, around December 11th, around then. And the warehouse was I remember being here during Mardi Gras time last year. Signed our, yeah, uh, the lease took effect on the 1st of January. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. There was almost a month of all these things having the encampment. Yeah. It's just an enormous amount of, of handwork. I mean, not only the renovating the space, but the creating of all the materials and everything is so impressive. Uh, I love it. So... Uh, thank you. Thank you, Briley, for showing us your, your area, and keep up the good work. It's wonderful thank to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Briley. Um, okay. Hold on one second. Um, yeah, so also Nick and Briley actually came here pretty recently around Halloween and got married here. So I think, uh, Mark, you were going to play that clip, maybe, or a part of it. I put it on the etherpad of the Halloween wedding. Uh, uh, I'm not organized. Uh, 
Did you did you title it as Halloween Wedding? Yeah. Oh, I failed. It's okay. <laughs> but we're going to make the Etherpad available to, not the production pad, but all the links that you gave us. Uh, clearly, one of the chat facilitators is putting it all in a pad to show, share with the public. So I encourage everybody to um, take a look at that because uh, Tara and the crew worked hard putting together all these things. I can't believe I missed that. But, yeah. oh well, um, it we're happens. Gonna we're going to talk about digital media next. And, um, okay, um, yeah, I got I kind of what I wanted to say about digital media that's quick kind of connects, I think, to what we were saying. So I was wondering, um, would you hold the camera? Right. Just hold it with this back. Good? Hi. Um, I'm Terry Gill, my Twitter handle is Small Affair. And I, after the, I started um, trying to live stream Occupy because I was worried about police brutality. And I remember being at the encampment and having this Android with a battery that would die. This was in November of 2011. Wow. And um, wanting to live stream. And the first thing I live streamed was Occupy the Stage. Um, it just happened one night and it was really awesome. And then the uh, encampment was raided and it was really hard to find Occupy. And I remember there was a Mardi Gras parade, um, the first Mardi Gras parade of the year. And I had it, there wasn't a lot of digital media going on at all then. So I, there wasn't really a website, um, there wasn't much of a Twitter, so it was really hard for me to figure out what Occupy was doing. So I heard through word of mouth that Occupy was going to be in a Mardi Gras parade. And I told all the live streamers, oh, I'm going to go live stream Occupy in a Mardi Gras parade. And it just like the was in word of mouth. And I went to the Through the Roof, Through the Vision parade, and they, they were, it was actually the stage. But they expect us back. And they are in. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh, they're in it. And so that's, I mean, that's just kind of um, my little feel about digital media, how I got involved, was that I saw them on the street and started recording them. And you said, hey, I could do this. And so are you doing most of the digital media for the group now, or do you have, is everybody contributing to the pile and you just kind of manage the info flow, or how does that all work? I would say I definitely do a, a lot of it. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Because it's a, it can be a beast, and I mean I know you work tirelessly at it, and we're putting your bamboozer channel link up for people to refer to, and I encourage. There's some good stuff up there, and I have a couple of clips to play later, so keep up your good work. And and just so everybody know, because all these people know how difficult I am to work with. You know, Tara was absolute jewel, and we both were trading stuff back and forth and got excited, so we, we thought we'd try it this way tonight. So I want to thank you for all your patience and hard work on it. Thank you. You've been wonderful to work with, and this is a real privilege. And um, let me go to Captain Black now. This is, so here we have kind of the digital media station. Um, well, there's a computer. <laughs> and um, I love, this is... Uh, we Captain Black, and he was at the encampment um, at Duncan Plaza is where I first met him. And um, I'm going to let him introduce himself and, you know, talk a little bit about his relationship with the collective. Hello, world. My name is Captain Black. My Twitter handle is N-A-D-R-A-E-N-G-I, not the N-G. And basically, I guess I represent more the Ron Paul wing of the movement. You know, we uh, are very interested in autonomy, we're very interested in direct democracy, we're very interested in people actually participating instead of having corporations manipulate us to, uh, you know, the puppetry of the two-party system. And we do it without being angry, without being malicious, and by being very cooperative. You know, I think it's a model that could be duplicated. What I like about this group is uh, a lot of people aren't able to bridge the gap between Grievance and governance as smooth as I've seen people do here. Yeah. Well, welcome to OPN, and thank you for taking taking the uh, evening and spending with us. So, tell us a little bit about your your digital media center there. What do you, what is it? What's your goal for this little workspace, and how do you use it? I use it to operate several blogs. 
I'm also carrying on a number of blogs and just presenting the idea you know, of uh, individuals not being controlled by a person or organization and you know, kind of corny stuff, people helping each other freely without coercion and without force. And it's a, it's a message that while it seems a little bit, uh, like I said, corny, it's being very widely received because people are growing a little bit tired of feeling like they're being manipulated, they're being treated like sheep or children. So, you know, people, I think that if there's any good that came out of this horrible economy, it's that unions like this have come together. Yep. I, I actually, um, this just reminded, if it's okay, this just reminded me of something after Hurricane Isaac, um, the quiet crisis was yes. something that you and I were both using a lot of digital media to discuss. Um, we were calling it the quiet crisis and we're blogging about it and using Twitter and every other avenue we could. One of the great beauties of uh, digital media is that one person at a keyboard has the equivalent reach of a 20th century radio station and a printing press and an army of newsboys with each keystroke. So you know, it really multiplies your ability to connect with the world and to bring important ideas and issues to people's minds. Um, you have a really good grasp of the media because we have these same discussions too about using it as a tool for communication and you mentioned radio and that's always mm -hmm. on my mind like how do we get out of the bubble and how do we reach people beyond just the internet access. Is, is this something that using digital media as a communication tool, is that something you had been interested in all the time you know, for a while or did you see a need for it and just said okay here's a tool I can use it? Well, here's something funny. I'm a little older than everybody here, so I go back to the days when you actually had uh, typewriters. Yeah. Well, me and you are the same age, so I, that's cool. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not talking in the blind to somebody. So being able to see how communications has evolved so quickly, and let's face it, for a lot of younger people, they can't get it on their iPhone, they can't get it on their smartphone, it didn't happen. So using this using this relatively simple medium allows us to be, be connected with the world and I've got people from England Australia and other places following me on Twitter and in the old days I would have to spend years possibly building up a profile big enough to reach to those far distant places but yeah digital, digital media is indispensable um, so I'm going to ask a, a little bit of a personal question don't feel obligated to answer it, but I'd be interested in what your your background was before you came to work, you know, in and around Occupy and with uh, Occupy the Stage, because it sounds like you have some to, some sort of a media background, just the way you're you're discussing it. Well, I've um, been a published writer since my sophomore year in college, and an outgrowth of that and being an activist, I've both written news and been covered by news media. So, yeah, okay, uh, so that that makes sense. And so you know the power of the word and the power of communication. Yes, I do. Yeah, keep up the good work, man. It's it's very inspiring. Thank you for, for sharing it with us. And we're posting Thank your blog on our chat so people can check that out and uh, keep it up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Black. Okay, so... um. We're going to walk over and get to see the fun large eye objects again. And we're going over to the bike shop now. So here we have Robert. And just let me, yep. Oh, wow. Man, that's a, like a four wheel bike shop there. Good Lord. Yeah, I put a lot of work into it. Getting there. So a few more things I want to do. So uh, I'm pretty happy with it right now. Yeah, and is, it, is the bike stuff something you just picked up out of interest, or did you have some experience with that previous to this endeavor? Well, I mean, I don't think we all know learn a little bit about bikes growing up. You know, you know how long you know, I wanted to just turn and wrench on it just to see what happens. And I've always been handy with my hand, so it's just. Oh, I just like tinkering with them, Yeah, Tara, can no. you give us a good pan around of that space? Because I, I was looking at the pictures. I said, oh, that, that's nice, but this is the real deal, man. I mean, you got it going on in there. Um, what do you, what do you do with all those bikes and parts? Um, 
Well, I mostly build uh, motorized bicycles here. Um, I also have all these extra frames. Uh, a couple of these I have other projects in mind for, but I'm probably going to put most of these back together um, for house bike fleet and, you know, maybe sell one or two. So motorized bikes. Um, so this bike, for example, right mm -hmm. here, I'm going to zoom in, has a motor on it. Yes, uh, 66cc two-stroke motor. Uh, awesome little thing. Depending on the weight of the rider and bike, you can get upwards to 35, 40 miles an hour on them. Wow. And do, yeah, get about 100 miles a gallon as well. Although I estimate mine gets about 80. But that's certainly better than like 20 on an SUV. Yeah, exactly. And a, so a, that in New Orleans is a bike-friendly city, right? I mean, as far as it being flat, oh, easy to get it's around. Wonderful. So, yeah, there's no hills here, and so yeah, you can get wherever you're going, you know, within a few minutes. You just cruise right along. It's great. Plus, having them then have the motor, too, makes it even better. It's a lot of fun parts of the city just to cruise, just to roll through. I like roll through city park every now and then. Um, you also, if you have to go through the drive through at the bank and they require you to be in a motorized vehicle, like if a lobby is closed, they'll let you go through on a motorized bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but not a pedal bike, huh? Good. What a weird rule. Sometimes <laughs> are a little, uh, little more finicky about that. Yeah. Sometimes I get away with it, but sometimes I don't. It's, it's a wonderful so, um, little shop there, Robert. You, I'm I'm really really impressed. Uh, you know, I had great expectations of the space and the shops, and you've blown them away already. This this is pretty incredible. Oh yeah, and it's something anybody could do. I think you know, a little time and effort. A little yeah, a little time and effort. A lot. I mean, these really, what is What's gotten me at this point is just bits and pieces here and there, you know, just find things, little things, you know, right now, and then you cross something, come across something cool like a bike plane, and then, you know, next thing you know, you got yourself a nice little bookshop going. Um, I love it. Do, so do you um, guys, I know I've had some friends in New Orleans that did like community bike repair and stuff like that and little workshops. Are you guys doing that yet or is that on, on stack for maybe someday or what's your, what's your plan? Well, I do most of the bike repairs. I mean, not all of them, but I'm mostly just doing for the actual house, mm -hmm. uh, just for the warehouse group. Um, I don't really, I, I know a lot, but I don't really know everything. I don't really have a specific bike parts, uh, you know, inventory to do it, unfortunately. I mean, maybe in the future it's something I'd like to think about, you know, if I ever expand out of, out of this little workshop. But, yeah, mostly, like I said, in-house. Yeah, or most of the group uh, bikers as everybody pedal around. I like the vision of that. I am the only. Yeah, I am. I have a car that um, I try not that I try to drive as little as possible. So you have one other vehicle, and it's more. Oh yeah. More, you know, supply runs and right. A service vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Great. Yeah. We're pretty. <laughs> Well, I, I yeah. love that you guys are not not only, you know, it's sometimes it's kind of weird because somebody will have a bike shop, but they don't they don't ride bikes. You know, they just have the bike shop. So it's really good to see you guys covering kind of all ends of the spectrum there. You're actually living and working what you believe in and what you do. So it's like a holistic kind of thing which speaks really well of the group so so thank you so much for showing showing that to us it's wonderful it's so clean i mean i have a shop it's not that clean <laughs> it's beautiful oh and let look at the beautiful sign um look at this sign this, awesome. I, I just think this is great there is yeah. art everywhere at the occupy the stage warehouse i love it there really is. There definitely is. Here's some art on a skateboard as we approach the woodworking shop. You ready? Okay. It's kind of dark in there. 
Terry, I can't, we can't hardly <laughs> hear him. Yeah. Hold on a second. Okay. okay. Yeah, so this is, this is the wood shop, and, like, just up here, there's this really nice, um, you can see the woodworking sign shop, the wood shop, and this is Justin's wood shop, and I'm trying to get as much light as possible on him, so. <laughs> oh, we're not going to do a set change? I was, I was all geared up. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, well, wow. Nice. Set change. Um, yeah, we, um, anyway, um, this is my wood shop, it's, uh, mostly there is so much that goes into woodworking and what have you that this, my space is mostly just for storing tools, material, a lot of my tools I don't even keep here, they're, they're on the job of my, you know, my usual day-to-day -day job, um, so, but I've got duplicates of most everything. I do need another table saw. So, uh, and that we pretty much got everything here for as far as a full, fully functional wood shop. Um, so we do things like uh, the bicycle chassis we built the float on will be soon be turned into a mobile info booth, which we're going to be rolling around town and stuff like that. And this is the reclaimed cypress I've uh, planed down and uh, we'll be making it out of that. So. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, uh, myriad of shops here. You were asking earlier if, like, we did, did any kind of community stuff. Um, we, we held a, uh, uh, I think a, uh, for the Craftivist workshop, uh, the birth of that was kind of, uh, was a community outreach project where we were doing classes on, uh, uh making gifts, uh, for Christmas. And there are plans, at least for me in the future, to uh, do some uh, uh, teaching, some teaching programs to uh, 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 teach people uh, basic woodworking construction. One of the things I want to focus on is like restoring the old architectural aspects of New Orleans. Um, one of the things New Orleans is suffering from is, is a lack of skilled uh, craftsmen that can restore these old houses. Because the kind of um, craftsmanship that went into these old houses, you just don't see much of these days. And it's getting to the point where the actual craftsman is, is just dying off. Everything nowadays, you know, you just you buy it from Home Depot and bang it together real quick. All the doors are pre-hung. All the windows are pre-hung. You know, it's just so. Yeah, working on these old houses, it's it's a completely different beast, and that's one of the things I want to get into. Um, it's also a good, good career move for anybody who doesn't already have a uh, solid direction. Um, so, yeah, yeah. And uh, and so the, uh, out of your, your wood shop there, and I, the images I looked at, like, like all good builders, you store your tools there and then you spread out into the big space in order to do these projects. So my understanding is that the puppet theater was built out of this shop. And a float for the uh, parade was built out of the shops. Yeah, uh, there it's kind of uh, it comes from. Usually, a lot of those projects usually are generated from the field work shop. You know, of course, uh, the float needed. You know, the woodworking shop put, built a, a wooden body on the uh, on the chat on the bicycle chest on the bicycle chassis bicycle trailer chassis. So you've got aspects of the bicycle shop. Let's well, go over there while we, yeah, let's walk over to the floor. Yeah, I think it's good okay. because yeah. it's, everything is more than one thing. And so you're using the different skills and different trades in order to come up yeah. with a complete idea. Yeah, we've got aspects of the craft of this workshop, um, the tintalorium, of course, uh, the bicycle shop mm -hmm. is on a bicycle trailer chassis. You've got aspects of the woodworking shop is the body of the float, of course. As well as um, like like even the hack space, you know, you, you know, um, um, stripped down, got some LEDs for a little bit of backlighting on the uh, on the uh, and an orange shine there. So right. yeah, so it, 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 it's really 
a lot of these projects are a combination. Almost all the projects are a combination of at least you know a couple of workshops. So they definitely are, but I mean the durability of this and like the actual way it's made. It's pulled by a bicycle. Um, a bicycle hooks up to yeah, it and it, pulls it, that. It, right. This is the yoke here, so it would so, pull along. Yeah, so it rode all the way to the French Quarter and was in a parade, and it, we were, it was really, really awesome. Yeah, I pedaled it all the way to the French Quarter, and then I realized, like, once we got there, it just was really a lot easier to push it along than it was to pedal it to. Yeah. Well, and then this is it's the, a little heavy. Yeah, and that what that trailer was designed for, but it, it worked. It worked very well, anyway. And uh, I just wound up walking it through the through the parade. The parade tend to move so slowly that the stop and go was just a lot easier to walk the bike. So, um, and you, could you, you said you're going to re reconfigure that for another project. Is that what he said? Did I understand that right? Yeah, I won't be, yeah, we'll be taking the float off. We'll probably just go ahead and store that for future use. Um, for the most part, you know, the, uh, uh, at least the the, uh, the float body and uh, the the chassis, the bicycle trailer chassis, we're going to try to use the mobile information booth. So cool. Excellent. And um, you, yeah, excellent. Did you um the puppet theater? Um, since we're talking about the way it was built, and it's right here. We had this idea around um, before the election. Um, right now the puppet theater is not doesn't have an election theme, but to kind of choose your puppet and to have a puppet show with different puppets in it. And that was our idea. And then Justin actually built the puppet theater. And did you want to just kind of explain the way it can be disassembled and taken places a little? Or? Yeah, for the most part, it's basically just uh, three simple panels, uh, two by two frames with uh, your typical blue tarp tricks over it. Uh, we wouldn't paint the tarp. Paint didn't stick very well, so that's one thing to keep in mind. I actually wanted to get some canvas, but the Home Depot close by only had canvas drop cloths that were five foot by five foot each. For someone in the business, I can tell you by experience, or, you know, five foot drop cloth is practically worthless. I mean, you might as well use them for So, but anyway. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, these uh, three panels, you just got a few screws here that hold these two panels, then these two panels together, these two joints. You can screw those here, excuse me, curtain, curtain support here, and uh, breaks down three panels, throw them back for pickup trucks. And you yeah, it. or it can go on the top, on the top of a top station top. wagon, yeah, and then it can be screwed back together, and um, that little ledge back there right here comes off. So it's... Yeah, it's pretty portable. Um, yeah, that we can we we can bring it to different places and um, decorate it however we want. Love it, I love it. I built mine out of old. I went to the Habitat you know resale store, the salvage store, and I built mine out of you know interior doors, so it just kind of collapses. But but that looks really substantive. I love I love all the the decoration on the front of it. <laughs> it's great. So it's kind this, of a combination. The passion mm -hmm. of the Walmart it's elves, that was a Christmas play? Um, it was, actually. The Walmart elves were, actually, they emerged from digital media but became a, something in real life. They were, um, Walmart was using the Twitter hashtag Walmart elves to pretty much spam people on Twitter. Um, if someone tweeted, hi, I'm really hungry, Walmart would just tweet at them, oh, really, you should buy a waffle iron, uh, Walmart elves. And so this was when we were, um, on Black Friday, we went to some Walmart strikes, two of them actually, um, in solidarity with people, on, with Walmart workers on strike. And it just seemed like really ridiculous that Walmart would imply that elves were doing all the work and elves aren't real. And um, so... <laughs> There are some Walmart elves Twitter accounts now, and um, the Walmart elves kind of um, like some of these resigning materials. Like we've put in actual. Well, I, I, I mean, I did it, but <laughs> with some other people here, but in actual Walmart, like resigning Walmart about people deserving a living wage. So the idea is that the Walmart elves are on strike. And they won't work for Walmart. And um, 
then there's a group of people who associates who love Walmart who claim that Walmart is really wonderful and treats its employees great and they kept talking about the passion all the Walmart employees had for Walmart and how great they were so this was um the passion of the Walmart elves was about the Walmart elves passionately supporting the strike <laughs> and who writes the shows do you guys all just kind of sit around um, and come up with the idea and kind of bang it out they have been pretty spontaneously so far I mean the this we've only really had three so far so They've been pretty spontaneous up until this point, but we're we're going to work on sitting down and really scripting out some shows. Since they tend to involve audience participation, there's a certain amount of improv that has to take place. That's great. Well, um, did, did Justin walk away? I wanted to thank him for giving us a tour of the woodworking shop. So I, d I just got distracted by the puppet theater. <laughs> it was a great job on that. Thank you, thank you. It was, it was, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was, it, uh, it's actually pretty, it's pretty simple. If anybody's out there who wants to put together a little puppet theater, uh, it came together in just a couple hours. So you know, it's at least the body of it. Of course, the artwork right. and stuff like that was something that would come over time. But yeah. And who who was the I mean who's the driving force or forces of of doing puppets? It's not every it's not something everybody does. Is that a New Orleans thing or is it just like you guys like puppets and use them to communicate with or what? Yeah, well, the idea the idea was originally born. Um, we wanted to we wanted basically we wanted to explain about the uh, two party dichotomy and how we believe it's just it's totally defunct. So it was like. The idea was the political puppet theater, so you yeah. know it's like uh, much like you have you see on a sign here, well, no, choose your puppet, puppet on the left or puppet on the right. So that was kind of the brain. That was how the whole thing yeah. evolved, you know. And so Tara Jill, as far as like uh, who runs the puppets and puppet theater, Tara Jill was pretty much taken that by storm. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, when we go in the Craftivist Workshop, I'll show the puppets. Yeah, she's yeah. got a whole stand of puppets she's been making. We watched, like, old footage of Jim Henson from 1969 explaining how to make, you know, simple do-it-yourself puppets. So, right. you know, I'm going to send Tara pictures of my puppets tonight before I go to sleep. I can see it right now. <laughs> well, I mean, one thing that did happen also with the election, um, and we're actually going over to the Craftivist Workshop which is cool. Um, Want me to handle it on the camera or you and Riley? In a, in a moment. All right. Yeah. Um, we did, so we had like our own voting. Um, Louisiana is one of eight states that doesn't allow write-in candidates. So this, this was in the puppet theater, but we took it out. And I'll show the craftivist workshop in a minute. So we had our own ballot box where you could vote. And instead of choosing the puppet on the left or the puppet on the right, um, we had, you could just sim oops, symbolically write in a candidate. So we actually had our corporate puppet in the puppet theater. Here's the puppet right here. And the <laughs> idea was, yeah, there's, I, I made them, I chopped their heads off and sewed the heads on the different bodies. So, and put those corporate stickers on them. And then there's also on the marionettes look, you know, pretty much the same. And it seems like, especially around election time, that our act, that having more creative actions that were exciting and got people interested would be maybe work more, more effectively as outreach. So it ended up becoming something that people have really enjoyed and um it's yeah it's an ongoing project but um yeah which is really great and you, you so those, on, those, i mean you guys do a good bit of actions and outreach i mean you're steady busy on stuff as much as possible um yeah so you can still vote too, by the way, and you can even vote digitally as long as you only vote once. Um, you can write in a candidate if you if you want to vote a, a write in candidate because um, we don't we don't think that the government should have a right to tell us we can only vote on one day. 
And um, the voting, but the ballot box is here, and we guard it really carefully to discourage voter fraud. <laughs> That's awesome. And yeah, those are all the people that were allowed to vote that day. Um, those are the people that aren't allowed to vote in the state of Louisiana. So we that was on the side of the puppet theater, so all these different people could vote. Man, you guys gave a platform for the people without a voice. That's great. We really we really tried, and the puppets, you know, made it fun. We didn't want, yeah, the puppets made it kind of fun, and people would come up to the puppet theater like, oh, wow, what's this, a puppet theater, you know, and then, like, we have, like, this information about the NDAA on there. So that was kind of neat. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that was the first one was the Election Day puppet show. Um so this is the Craftivist Workshop, and I'm going to hand the camera over in a moment, but it's kind of Craftivist Activists, so crafts that relate more to, yeah, to, our, to thank you, to activism. <laughs> okay, so th then this, this is, oh, I love this workshop so much, so just hold it real, don't, don't touch, don't turn the off, just hold it right there. Okay. Okay. Hey there. Justin with the camera, ladies and gentlemen. It's an epic night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I actually, I do have live stream capabilities. It's, it's been a little while since I've done it, so. You're doing a great job. Hey there. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, by the way, if you want to, you kind of in a minute. Um, yeah. So, hi. This is the Craftivist Workshop, and I'm so excited that we all set up and, um, the Craftivist Workshop started before the holidays. Um, at, it was called Up Holiday, and it was an opportunity for people to come to free workshops to learn knitting, to learn jewelry making, to uh, learn how to make gifts to give to people instead of spending money, you know, at corporate America, or people who just can't afford stuff or want to learn how to, how to make things. Just applying another skill set, basically, was the goal. And it's creative outlet and whatnot. And so this was this was a a public thing, right? You guys opened up for for people to come in. And how yeah. often did how often did you do that? Um. Uh, well, originally we're um. I'm trying. You and I need to sit down and talk about that. Yeah. But it originally it was like on Sunday evening, and it was uh open and um pub like publicized through the free school. And anybody could come, and um, I think we have a couple shots in the slideshow at the beginning of, uh, of a bunch of us like working on jewelry and whatnot uh, for one of them. Um, but uh, it's not on Sundays anymore. We haven't really made an official day of the week. But really, I mean, as of right now, as far as I'm concerned, anybody could come in any time they wanted, as long as I know that they're grabbing something make whatever you want. <laughs> hey, well, you know, that's a, it brings up a good question for, for something like that. How do you guys manage, you know, access? You know, you have your, your evenings, but if some people wanted to come in, do you just kind of like make sure one of you guys are around and then it just happens, or is it a little more controlled? Well, I mean, they can contact us through the website. Um, is the phone number on there? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, we have a phone, and we have a phone here that, like, call and be like, yo, can I stop by? Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, unless there's nothing, like, serious going on, if we're, like, going to an action or, you know, having um, other things going on, yeah, come by all the time. You can contact us on the website, email, phone, Twitter, Twitter yeah. Facebook. I mean, we have regular great. shows that are open to there, the public. and uh, Yeah, there's many resources to, to get a hold of us if you want to get involved. We're not you want to say something, TJ? Um, just, yeah, that when we do have actual practice and teaching classes, like, there will be scheduled and announced, and the schedule will be published, like, there's going to be a few classes. You guys are extraordinarily well organized. Bring the finger puppet closer so everybody can see it. <laughs> um, and there's actually, um, there's a woman here in town who is a very experienced puppet maker who I'm hoping will come and 
teach some puppet making skills because I'm kind of learning as I go along. This is one of the Walmart elves um, who performed in, in the passion of the Walmart elves. And um, they had a chain. See, they had a chain like this. It, yeah, and then let me see. These puppets, and anybody, I really, I don't know how to make puppets. And when I started saying we were going to have the puppet theater, someone accused me um, on Facebook, I guess, of um, trying to profit off the movement by, um, you know, my career as a professional puppeteer. And I didn't know how to make puppets at all. But um, this man, actually, Justin, found a really good video of um, a Jim Henson video, how to make puppets. And this is a tennis ball. And then, like, inside of it, I made this little, there's kind of, I mean, I, I use duct tape pretty much for anything. So there's, I cut a hole in the tennis ball. There's some duct tape. You can stick your finger in there. Um, I put some fabric on his head. We like, uh, well, we, Riley especially, we like to mess up Barbie. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, we have some so hair. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's, that's, that's. Uh, yeah, see, this is a jailhouse elf Barbie. Jailhouse elf Barbie. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. So that works, that works out really well, though, because then there's some hair that can go on the puppet. So, I mean, this, so then you just have this cloth. So you put your finger in there. So this is the random anarchist puppet here. Yeah, this puppet's an anarchist. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so look. Well, I think he's a boy. People thought it was a girl, but I thought it was a boy. So I don't know. So I, thought, you, I thought it was a boy. You did? Okay, yeah. great. So then you kind of put the um the rubber non band. Non-gender <laughs> specific <laughs> anarchist. Yes, as, as, as it should be. You put your, and then you kind of, you have these hands. See, hi there. <laughs> hi there. So That's awesome. In the passion of, yeah, in the passion of the Walmart elves, he managed to rescue one of the Walmart elves from Walmart. Uh, yeah, he, he, he got one of the Walmart elves out. Not this one. Um, <laughs> they, they were on this chain. So, yeah, let me get him. Um, yeah, so one of, this Walmart elf, see, he's not holding the little wages sign anymore because he doesn't have to work at Walmart anymore. <laughs> So yeah, he got rescued um, by this puppet because yeah, because you could actually like, take him and run him run away with him. That happened in the puppet theater one night. Um, you kind of spontaneously, yeah. <laughs> so that was yeah part of the passion of the Walmart elf. And it's fun. I mean, this is a little piece of cork. These are um, upholstery tacks, and um, you know, it's it, it's it's pretty fun to make these puppets and and to see how easy it is. I was you know a really didn't know it would be that easy. Political so. puppet theater. Hey, do you have any of the others, Briley, you or Terry, do you have any examples of the other stuff like you guys were making during the holidays? I mean, I saw a bunch of Twitter pictures from it or just to show people yes. kind of what other assortments you did. It was, um, everybody in, uh, in the collective uh, was part of making these bracelets. Uh, they're out of bamboo mm -hmm. tiles. Uh, from like uh, place, sorry, I'm shaking. From like place mats, and then uh, you take pieces of uh, paper. You can print it off the internet and cut it up, and then uh, you know, ha uh, glue them on individually. We have like what's the name? Mod Podge. Yeah, Mod Podge. Yeah, Mod Podge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. And then just lacquer over it and let it dry, and use whatever string you want. I mean, it's it's a really simple thing, but it's a fun. It it was a fun activity yeah, made, uh, and like. I mean, once once we all got involved with it, we really couldn't stop. Yeah, we made <laughs> like, keychains, bracelets, yeah. uh, we made uh, a lot of couple jewelry. necklaces. Yeah. yeah, we gave uh, put some out as um, throws for the Mardi Gras parade, yeah. and some others we're going to be using on the uh, information booth. Uh, see yeah. about getting a permit for selling trinkets and stuff like that. So fantastic. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Also, did, hey, show them, show them the button. We, we recently the, the button, button machine. Button. Yes, yes. I want to see my machine. Super Bowl we brought, we brought a... Oh, here Thank we are. You. I love you. Yeah. Okay. So we've been making these buttons um, with the button machine, and they're buttons like of our own mm. signs. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the original art on our signs that have been painted. Um, been printing them out. This is I love the Jindal side shop um, sign. Jindal side, kill Jindal side, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. And um, so we've been making buttons of our of our signs. 
little by little. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, I have an Etsy. You can sell buttons on Etsy, so you'll be able to you put no on it. <laughs> yeah, this was the original sign that inspired the puppet theater for election day. Yeah, vote for your choose your puppet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We DC Media yeah. Group needed a bunch of those for the inauguration. We should have gotten in front of the curve on that one. And yeah, this is an actual picture. This of was a noisemaker. This was a noisemaker we made uh, for one of our protests, a or noise protest. Head. Somebody had uh, somebody within our group, Robert, had taped together a couple of wash tubs and made a giant drum out of them. Uh -huh. And. Uh, yeah, yeah, they make a great drum. They're no, they're no good for wash tubs any longer, but it's an amazing drum. But yeah, we had to put our stencil on it, and then it makes a, it really makes a nice button. So. <laughs> and it's really easy to cut into a circle. Um, and this is the last. This is one more from yeah. an action from an actual action a bank foreclosure. Yeah, yeah, we did. We foreclosed on Chase one day. So. <laughs> yes, and then um, we have this shirt. Um, this shirt is here to this shirt is here. Yeah, this is here to protest the um Super Bowl Clean Zone. Clean Zone. And are we allowed to talk about that? We kinda um, have some information we, on that. Yeah, um I haven't read the whole thing yet. Um the Clean Zone is a huge part of New Orleans where they um it consists mostly of like the uh, the business district, uh, French Quarter, Greater Business District, um, Algiers Point, basically all of the money district of, of New Orleans. And what they did is they put it totally under NFL control for a whole week. And what they 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 put uh, certain past certain laws where any advertisement, any sign, even a sign worn on a person, has to be at least sixty percent NFL. NFL uh, branding, branding and approved by the city of New Orleans. And approved by the NFL. Yeah. And, um, if you search op Super Bowl with the hashtag on Twitter, um, that's where a lot of that information, people have been talking about it. So we made the, Justin made this pencil, but this shirt is illegal. We've kind of been wearing just to raise awareness about the ridiculousness of the clean zone. But it looks like the ACLU has intervened in advance and has filed a, has gotten a temporary restraining order on most parts of the clean zone. Um, yeah. This is breaking news that I haven't had time to read all of it yet because we, um, we got we on really, the show. Yeah, we were yeah. getting ready for the show. But, so that, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. and this, yeah. Is, this is new information to almost everybody watching, but you know, you and I had talked about this, and so I just wanted people to pay particular attention to that because what it was is a local and arbitrary law that enabled... Um, it was like mandatory NFL branding in the business district, which, yeah. which is it's a to total corporate imposition under yeah. penalty of fines and, you know, all that stuff. So it's, a, it's yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah, and uh, they, there was like things, uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, this is the guide, but the map of the clean zone is huge. Like, this is this huge area. Yeah, basically, uh, basically you've got like uh, all of the business central business district, uh, French Quarter along here. This like this whole thing around the Superdome. That whole area was under 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 that. Uh, you got Algiers Point here across the river, and this whole swath also was under NFL control. You know, and uh, so I mean there was things from like all vendors that were selling Coke had to switch to Pepsi. Or maybe it was vice versa. I don't know. It all tastes the same. But I know there was yeah, a, no, Pepsi is a sponsor. Pepsi is a sponsor. So anybody, any any shop, any any uh, restaurant selling Coke had to switch to Pepsi. You have to file for a special permit to any any of the business owners, like a restaurant or anybody. They have to file for a special permit for this period. Uh, just all kinds of rigmarole. Of course, you know they're chasing away. They're also actively chasing away. All the uh, uh, like yeah, street protesters, uh, the street vendors, the uh, musicians, um, um, and uh, your buskers, you know, your, your street entertainers, and they come in all varieties in New Orleans. So they've been making a push on these on these cats as well, just trying to get them out and 
Um, so all the corporations can, you know, put their Disney-fied version of New Orleans out there for everybody to buy. Well, so yeah. <laughs> so so you, you guys, you guys sort of have plans. So I don't know if you can talk about them or not, but you know, fight the good no. fight on our behalf. <laughs> Yeah, and making them. Um, I'm gonna start. We're making. We're gonna make some buttons and some some buttons, some designs, some puppets, and um, some craftivist stuff um, to for outreach. Um, some stuff from the craft work, craftivist workshop about this about the Super Bowl. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, there's there's more there's more to that story. We wish we could talk about, but unfortunately, yeah. uh, yeah, we'll save it. We, we'll get the debrief. You know, we'll save it for another show because it'll be interesting okay. to yeah. see how it plays out. So the craftivism workshop is huge, and again, the interrelationships with the other the other other shops, and you're you're doing some community outreach out of that, and um, it's just. It's just wonderful. So what's what's next on the tour? Uh, next on the tour is the Hacker Space. Yeah, definitely. The Craftivist Workshop couldn't um, exist in a bubble. It needs the other workshops. Um, it needs all the other workshops, pretty much. Yeah. 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 And uh, I don't know if you showed them the space where we have the floats and everything. These workshops are going to be expanding for a good way and multiplying as time goes on. It's, it's an ever evolving and changing uh, It's okay. alive. <laughs> yeah. Hi there. All right. You ready? Hello. I'm John. Hi, Lovely John. To Welcome to OPN. Thank you. Hello. <clears throat> and basically, it's more the technological end of things that we need to do in terms of building or reverse engineering anything electrical and light mechanical and you know it's all about having tools. Redundant <laughs> um, keep all your shit interchangeable by antiquated technology because it's easier to fix. And, you know, I designed the lights for the uh, rope that we had. And another thing that I do here is a lot of the uh, networking for some of the shows we have. Uh -huh. And when we do those events, I pretty much work the floor the entire time on behalf of the cause. Excellent. So another thing, John is, yeah, John is the person I went to. Um, we, the Walmart elves, um, and I, so the, I don't know what this where this comes from a combination of direct action um digital media and craftivists but um there was a solidarity day to make a um to make uh, well yeah uh, we have a qr code but also to make a shrine to the employees in the bangladesh uh, garment factory who died in the fire so i mean when i have a barbie or a doll and i want to burn it just the right way that it looks um, a certain way, John's who I come to, like, hey, I need to burn this Barbie just enough so I can put it in a coffin and put it in the faded glory section of Walmart because that was where, um, that was the product that Walmart sells at the factory was making when the people died in the Bangladesh fire. So John is really good at, you know, being able to kind of burn a Barbie just enough. So, without so John's like the special the effects guy for the crew. That's, I love this. So, um, What's your background, John? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, how did you come to this? Um, I was originally in Duncan Plaza with uh, Robert and Justin and Francis. And Which is the, the encampment. Um, yeah, that was Occupy New Orleans was Avery Alexander Plaza, which is its appropriate name, in front of City Hall. And when the stage came to us, it was something that Justin built with a couple other guys that were involved at the time, and we all kind of worked together on networking it. And I ran the Facebook for that out of the park and then had to go deal with some real-life shit for a while. But came back to town and joined the collective, and we're trying to move forward because at the end of the day, we all have the same agenda here. So that's why we work together so well as a group. Yeah. Um, and I had one other question. I had a note. So, 
tell us tell us a little bit about your observations on life hacking and you. And use? No, you. You. That's... You. Why are you? Oh, okay. Well, life hacking. What is life hacking, and why should we do it? Life hacking and anyone, I think. It. Oh, okay. So life hacking is essentially taking whatever it is that interests you. <laughs> the mayor, by the way. That's Miss <laughs> Landrieu. And uh, yeah, this is his computer. <laughs> yeah, this is the computer that I use. So I know all about it. Most of the things I have to use for it are peripheral because the original parts are so old and outdated that they don't work anymore. But the screen is damn near interchangeable with any other like HP or Compact, so I keep it around because it's easy to replace the parts, it's easy to figure out how to fix them, and that's a big part of what I think life hacking is. Having tools will change your life. This is a tap and die set. If you have a vehicle that you intend on working on, get one of these. Make sure you get the right kind because they come in metric and fast accurate. But that's, that's what it is. When, Even uh, just, are there ordinary? Oh, working. yeah, that's what I was out hoping. Of, uh, Thank you. Out of craftivism and our whole notion of wrecking Barbie dolls, these were the legs I had on my glasses for quite a while before I found more reasonable ones. <laughs> uh, yeah, so using everyday objects. Can I get a shot of the Terminator while she's still yeah. in play? And our leader, Miss Annie. <laughs> our, our supreme leader and uh, person in charge of vermin control, hey. Mrs. Annie. Hey, Annie. Talk <laughs> you kitties. Yeah, well, she's, 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 she's in charge. She, uh, she cracks me up whenever we're slacking around here and getting a little too comfortable with ourselves and <laughs> excellent. You got this way of saying do more shit. Yeah. <laughs> and she's been, and excellent at keeping like first she had to knock out the possum possum problem. Yeah, next then day. she knocked out the rats. And now the only time we see a mouse is when she's got it. So she's it's not, working. she's doing she's, her it's job. Working. Excellent. I, Good for I, her. I so, yeah, when we first moved in here, man, jeez, we had, there were some animals in this warehouse. <laughs> yeah, or um, I'm hoping, like, from, I can't do it in the craftivist workshop. I like that our workshops are next to each other a lot because I want to try to make, um, my, yeah, we, we share, we can share glitter. And, um, yeah, That's I'm right. hoping to make over um, overpass light brigade. So that's something I'm going to need your assistance. I'm going to need to ask you about. Yeah. I, I love, yeah. I love John's shop. You know, it's like you you guys are, uh, you know, I I do a little bit of all that stuff too. I don't think I do as good as any one of you, but I'm familiar with it, and it's great work. I love it. <laughs> I love the stencils too. I just love how all the art kind of gets incorporated into each little, into Nick each is a stenciling here. Nick stenciled that stuff, and you know, yeah, I don't know, I mean, I know I made the Solidarity stencil, and Justin made the Guy Fox mask stencil, and the, I don't know who made the other one. I have no idea where that came from, I mean, uh, totally, but yeah, uh, Nick painted these on here, and eventually, as we build more of these little uh, workstations, what I have going on over here is going to move closer towards the door, so we can set this up as a proper sound booth for managing the stage that we have here. Yeah. Sound equipment storage too. Right. Yeah. For managing the stage. Yeah. So I think we're gonna move on. Yeah. Um there, thank that, you John so much for, for showing us your space. Sure. So we're gonna move on to the, the to the performance space now. Yes indeed. This is the original stage that was in Duncan Plaza when Occupy NOLA had an encampment. And the lighting's kind of bad where you're standing, Justin. If maybe you want to stand in front of it a little more. He was wanting to be mysterious. Yeah, that's right. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, this is the original stage we had up there. We actually, it was a little bit larger at the Plaza. 
Um, but we left a small portion there when we knew the push was going to be coming, just, you know, for a symbolic gesture, but we didn't want to give up the whole stage, because they just, they came, we, we figured they might be coming in with trucks, just throwing everything away, and sure enough, that's exactly what they did. But we were going to add to it, we've actually got some uh, pretty fast platforms over here, we, we might add to it in the future, but it's been, up until now, it's been always been of an adequate size, so we haven't bothered. Um, we have a nice uh, piano that was donated to us by a guy that goes by the moniker Capitalist John. <laughs> really? So, yeah. I mean, I yeah, I didn't know he donated that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and these lights. Um, yeah. It's on it's on a it's on a loan basis for the most part. The guy I, I think uh, he ever comes to uh, play it, he won't he won't go. So, but uh, as far as I know, it's pretty much that. Uh, coming at home here. And, um, yeah, we had a comedian lined up for this evening, Tom Cannon, he's a member of the, the organization, but he is not, he will not be able to make tonight. So, unfortunately, we do not have a show for you folks. We were thinking about putting on a big performance, a live show, but we figured that would probably wind up defeating the purpose of doing the interview the way we're doing it. This show is going to count everything out. So. I actually think you're putting on a pretty good show for us tonight, so I, I wouldn't wor worry too much about it. <laughs> this is good. So you yeah, guys do you do have live performances there, and I'm showing a couple of images from that. So tell us a little bit about the shows you do there. Well, the first show was the 5th of November, a year ago. Can you two yeah. move closer yeah, together? Yeah, it was our opening show, 5th of November, uh, with a Guy Fawkes theme burlesque show. And that was in the park, in the when park. the stage was in the, the park. Yeah, that we, uh, I don't know if we were calling it, the name well, Occupy the Stage. It didn't come up until the city came, tried to come and shut it down after and the first show. And physically occupied the stage so they couldn't take it away. Yeah, and yeah. ever since then, the city never, never messed with the stage. Uh, and the link to that is on the etherpad of to that video occupying our stage. Yeah. Right. I actually watched that this afternoon. It is is really good. I highly rec. I recommend everybody watch every one of those videos. Um, I have a bunch of them queued up in a stack. So, um, but so now you do shows there. How frequently do you do live shows there? Um. Maybe once a month, but we're probably going to uh, step up the uh, frequency. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, uh, we've got uh, uh, when we first when we first got here, we were doing uh, shows every other week because the amount of work we had to put in the infrastructure, uh, as well as other activism that always takes time and stuff like that. And of course, you know, I mean, we've all got day to day lives, so we're not just like here only as activists. You know, we've got to go out and make a living just so we can fund. That sort of thing. So, <laughs> and uh, so, um, uh, yeah, I forgot where I was going. I How frequently we have hard. shows. Oh, yes, of course. Um, so, yeah, we were doing them for a couple, uh, every couple of weeks for a while. And then things just really evolved. We were evolving this way and that way. So, we haven't had any regularity in a while, but we're going to be getting regularity back. Uh, we recently had. A good influx of like uh, um, uh, a couple new members that really, a couple new motivated members that really added to our strength, and uh, we're getting getting a, a, a bit more popular uh, locally as well as nationally. So that's adding to our energy. So uh, things are going to be popping off yeah. pretty well. So you do off. you do the shows? They're open to the public. You get you get a charge at the door. And so it does it, you know, do you get pretty good crowds turning out for these things? Well, we've been, we've been thinking about charging at the door. We have yet, as we haven't done that yet. Oh, okay. So there have been yeah. free, free yeah. shows it's or donations? Donation. It's on a donation basis, yeah. Yeah. It pretty much has to be. I don't think, uh, uh, you, 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 otherwise, you've got to get a venue license and stuff oh, okay. like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Complications. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing too, we're always looking for new for new bands or new performers who kind of want to get a feel for the stage. We've had some people here before who 
really want to performing gigs in bars or you know actual venues, but they need a little practice on an actual stage. So that's something that's happened to yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, we have had some good names on our stage, and uh, yeah, yeah. We, we encourage you. We've done the open mic nights. Um, I usually. We usually try to do uh, uh, at least one like uh, solo act per show. We usually have like three different acts. We usually try to speak in one solo act or something like that, um, just so people can exactly get and it gives them a little bit of exposure too. Especially as our as our digital media empire grows. Wow. <laughs> that's that's what I say. The OPN empire, you know, dominate the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, our next show is on the seventh. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be uh, it'll be a DJ show. It'll be uh, it'll be electro, techno, whatever the kids are calling it these days. <laughs> yeah, and it it was fun. The last time we had one um, on Epiphany, yeah, that's when the Passion of the Walmart Elves was performed because you can kind of like put the puppet theater like over there. So yeah. that was kind of fun, you know. Yeah. Even if you couldn't really hear the puppets. Yeah, did you ever did you ever reperform it where we could actually hear the dialogue? Um, I need to. I haven't done that on record on tape yet. Even 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 with the even with the techno music turned all the way down. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have to do. Yeah, I have to do it again. But it was, um, it was it actually was... funny because they were doing a mix that was related to your puppet. Yeah, theater. that's that's so why I was... you, could, you couldn't hear it. The mix. Pretty much told the story it was for you. That <laughs> Wally, well, can you say the song that Wally World? Wally World, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows it but me. Of course, yeah. That, that bounce, that bounce song that came out a while ago, uh, Wally, 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 uh, uh, that was actually filmed at a Walmart here in New Orleans, <laughs> and so, yeah, the one yeah. where we put the Walmart elves materials. So yeah, so she did a she did a mix on that while we were doing the Passion of the Walmart Elves. So it was uh, it was it was pretty hilarious. Yeah, while while the actual um show, yeah the show was performing, <laughs> and um the stage another a cool thing about the stage actually is that this stage has been actually taken out of this warehouse in in June. It was taken to an action. Um, we had planned it for a while to have a march, um, to have a flash concert on summer solstice day in Washington Square to have a flash concert and then a march. And we brought the actual stage and then it ended up the Occupy Caravan was traveling to the Occupy National Gathering. So they came here and there was actually a theater troupe, the playback theater troupe was on the stage. Do you want to hold the camera for a minute since I'm talking? The playback theater troupe um, came to the GA and had an interactive general assembly here with the and incorporated the performance and the stage, which was really wonderful. And that was on a Tuesday night. And then um, um, then we on that Wednesday we had this flash concert plans, and it, it was, we were we weren't going to announce the time and date until right then with the whole caravan. So we actually brought the physical stage. To Washington Square, and it it, it was um, it wasn't as easy as it sounds at all. Um, Justin was got was in jail. Yeah, <laughs> he got picked had, up on a warrant. Yeah, he had warrants for making a speech on the steps of the state capitol in March. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no free speech at the yeah, state capitol. Okay. Yeah, I got arrested for shaking off the cops that tried to arrest me. Basically, they picked me up a few months later in New Orleans, and my charges weren't, weren't like, you know, assaulting a police officer or anything like that. It was resisting an officer and disturbing the peace. And, 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 and in no way did they try to charge me for anything other than getting away from their false imprisonment in the first place. Yeah. So, the charges were dropped. Unfortunately, I spent a week in jail before that. So Yeah, um, so he wasn't there. It took him a week to extradite me from New Orleans to Baton Rouge. It's like an hour drive, you know, took a week to expedite me, so that's why it took so long. Yeah, so the actual stage, yeah, we brought it, Robert, um, Robert did what was awesome, and people came out, you know, to help, like, we were just telling everyone, and the whole caravan was here, but yeah, the stage was in Washington Square, there's a picture, um, there's a couple pictures um, that I gave you where you kind of see, um, where you can see it there, and that that's in the summer, so the yep. stage, um, can leave the warehouse and go be 
Yeah, it was, it, was, it was designed to be a particular size so they could be loaded up in the pickup truck and move across town. Yep. Just, yeah, we, we, we knew we figured it, at some point it was probably going to have to get out of the park, so we figured it was definitely a good idea to build it so we could move it. Well, you know, mobility is everything. So I got to get this question in before the chatters have a riot. Um, we have several people that are puppet makers that are watching, and they want to make puppets and send to you guys. And then we have a couple of other people with craftivism supplies, but beads and I forget what else is on here. Anyway, is the address on your website a good mailing address to use? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah we talked yeah. about saying whether or not it was okay to say the F word during the show a little yeah, bit. Yeah. 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 We're we're a free speech though. Yeah. So okay, so you guys got that the address that Abby put on the chat is good. So now now we're calling you out. You said you wanted to do it. No need not to do it. <laughs> Thank you. So they're Great. pretty they're pretty happy about that. So yeah, see everybody wants to contribute. It's a good thing you guys are doing. Which actually um brings to mind do you guys I don't remember seeing it. Is there a donation link on your website or do you you have one on your bamboozer so we can find all that for people who are interested in maybe donating? It's at the top of the homepage of the Occupy the Stage website. It says donate okay. here click on it, it goes to a WePay, and that's like the Occupy the Stage general fund. Okay, yeah. got you. It's up there, and um, yeah. Now, I, I want to, um, who was it that was worried about having enough to talk about that we could fill up an hour? Was that Justin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that was so me. what do you think now? Um, I'm not as boring as I thought. <laughs> No, it's great. So, Tara, why don't you go ahead and walk us through? I mean, I've gotten all my questions through through there, but I think we were going to wrap over near the big stuff. Yep. I don't. I don't. Yeah, think we, we I don't even think we need to 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 change to the laptop. But if anybody else is around, so we can, you know, it's, give our appreciation again and thanks for the time and all that. Maybe you could get them all together for a group shot. That would be, uh, of course, um, definitely. And, hey, Captain. And it'll give you, give you, um, you guys a chance to share any last thoughts. And just for the sheer, the sheer entertainment value of it, I'll turn my camera back on. So I'm actually, where am I? I'm standing right there at the bottom of Robert's feet. So, <laughs> oh, now, I'm, oh, look, there's, there's a kitty. So um, I want to thank all you guys for being here. And Tara, thank you for working the stream on that end. There's Annie. Um, all of you, Bailey, Robert, John, Justin, Nick, thank you guys so much. It was an outstanding and wonderful show. The work you guys are doing is fantastic. So I, I know personally it's not easy. Keep it up. You're very inspiring. We've had a lot of viewers. You're going to be getting stuff in the mail from OPN, I feel certain. But um, it it's really great. Thank you for the stuff you're doing. And I'm going to give you fair warning. I'm absolutely coming down there and seeing that place sooner than later because I want to, yeah. I want to come drive some nails or something. So... <laughs> Thank you so much. It was great. You okay. guys have a good night. Be strong. And just give them hell at the Super Bowl. We're depending on you. Already on. Expect us. Don't Ex worry. Expect you. Awesome. Thank you, Tara, for doing this. Thank you. No, it's Thank been both. great. It's been, it's it been really wonderful. And, um... Hi there, everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, it's been great. Thank you for watching. And um, um, well, underscore fair, if anybody has any questions, you can tweet them at me or you can um, go to our OccupyTheStage.net and ask any questions there, too. Excellent. Have a good night. Thank you so much. I'll be talking to you soon. Okay. Have a good night. Thank All you. Right.